Today we're taking a look at the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro, which is a feature-packed mouse that sits opposite of the lightweight and stripped-down gaming mice like the new Death Adder and Viper V2 Pro, but offering what many gamers still want in a larger, more ergonomic shape with some cutting-edge features. The Basilisk V3 Pro retains the same shape that we're used to seeing in this lineup, being a bigger ergonomic mouse with a thumb scoop, being very similar in looks to the Logitech G502, making it a little bit more comfortable mouse, whether you're gonna be using it for just gaming on a daily basis or actually for just some everyday use on your computer in general. The shape though lends itself to a palm or claw grip style being too large for really any fingertip grip style. The shell has built-in rubber grips on each side providing a good surface to get a grasp on with the top of the shell having that very familiar PBT keycap-esque surface texture which I think is a good shell material that feels nice to game on and is used in a lot of Razer's other mice as well. You have the choice of either a black or white colorway when purchasing the mouse with the one I have today being that black version. They didn't skimp out on the RGB either, getting it on the scroll wheel, the Razer logo, and that really cool ribbon that kind of runs along the bottom of the mouse, making for a cool underglow effect on your mouse pad. All the colors and effects on the RGB can of course be configured within Razer's Synapse software. You do get two forms of wireless connectivity also on the Basilisk with either that 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection in use with that included dongle or a Bluetooth connection which can be selected via that switch on the bottom of the mouse by either sliding it all the way one way or the other. When that switch is in the middle position though, it will turn the mouse completely off and then it can be used in the wired mode via the USB-C port on the front of the mouse which can be used Used also with other USB-C cables. You're not only forced to use the included cable that Razer has in the box. And it will also have to be plugged in actually to charge it as well, unless you do have that charging dock, which can be added on for an extra charge with the mouse. The mouse is also advertised to get up to 90 hours of battery life, which I presume is with the RGB off or at least really low and possibly even in that Bluetooth connectivity, as I usually get only around three to four days of use out of it with the RGB on and usually longer play sessions. You have dongle storage beneath the puck on the bottom of the mouse, along with the profile switching button. The Basilisk is using Razer's Gen 3 opticals, which are supposed to just be more crispy and tactile, and I think they do feel really nice for an optical mouse switch. There is a decent amount of post travel, but only when you're closer up to the front of mouse one and two, with very minimal to none pre-travel on that. The scroll wheel has its own plethora of features in itself, with either a free spin mode or a tactile mode, which those can be switched between with that button that's gonna be right behind the scroll wheel. But there's also this really cool feature that you get access to in the software, which is called Smart Reel. And what this does is basically it's gonna either automatically put you into that free spin if you flick the wheel fast enough to activate it. And as soon as it slows back down, it puts it back into that more tactile mode and will stay there unless again, flicked faster again, giving you a lot of versatility in those options there if you can take advantage of it. You also get a side to side tilt along with the option to push the scroll wheel actually in, all movements having a nice tactile response. The second button back from the scroll wheel is your DPI adjustment, allowing you to cycle between your different stages, which can be configured in that Synapse software. At the front of the thumb scoop on the left side of the mouse, you have that sniper button available, which is already gonna be pre-configured to do what's called sensitivity clutch, which when held down, all it's gonna do is basically just drastically reduce your sensitivity, which is a cool perk, and of course can be tied to any other action if you don't wanna use that one specifically in the software. The side buttons are decent with some play in them, but nothing out of the ordinary for side buttons on a mouse. Being the feature-packed mouse of the Basilisk V3 Pro is, it comes in at a pretty hefty weight of 112 grams, which though that of course is not light by some standards today and may cause some sweaty gamers anger, the aim of this mouse is not to fill that need. And if you want that, well then check out some of my other videos on the Death Adder V2 Pro and Viper V2 Pro as they fill those needs for you. You do get four white PTFE feet on the bottom of the mouse with that one ring around the sensor as well, which does make for a pretty consistent and smooth glide. Although I still do wish we could see 
razor, find a way to get another foot on the right hand side of the mouse because from time to time, definitely can feel like that causes me some extra drag, but I will say it's not nearly as bad as some of the previous models of the Bassless. It's also rocking Razer's new Focus Pro 30K optical sensor, which as to be expected has been really spot on for me, giving me no issues during use. Overall, I think the Bassless gives you all you'd expect and some more. Is this gonna be the right mouse for every gamer? No, definitely not. For me personally, I still also prefer a lighter ambi mouse, but I definitely get the appeal of this mouse and the use cases I think are many for it. With the Razer Bassless V3 Pro coming in at $160, it's definitely not a cheap mouse, but I think you can definitely easily warrant that price tag, especially considering what a mouse like the Death Adder V3 Pro, which has a fraction of those features, is only $10 less. Both mice definitely serve different needs for different people, so if you think the Bassless is is your type of mouse, I definitely have no issue recommending it as a great option to consider. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button for me and do consider subscribing for more content like this in the future. Check out some of these other mouse reviews on the screen now.